So this guy's speaking at MythCon. Yes. Uh, which which one? Which uh, talk is he involved in? His panel. He is our social commentary outlets displacing the influence of mainstream media. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So, so his so he he talks about Magic the Gathering on YouTube, and he's gonna do a panel at a conference about how he's gonna replace the Wall Street Journal. I guess like. Yeah. But, <laughs> I think I totally get what Baring is up against with some of these crazy obsessions that the likes of Chrisiosity, Thomas Smith, Steve Shives, and Chrissy Winters have with him. And I feel like I've been getting a good taste of it. And I guess in my experience, if these are the type of people that are disagreeing with you or speaking out against you, it's probably the, you're probably the one in the right. You're probably the correct one. And while these people stream for tens of members of their audience, uh, I thought there were a few things I wanted to address from one of their many, many many obsessive video streams about uh, speakers of MythCon and people in general that they don't agree with. So this guy's speaking at MythCon? Yes. Uh, which, which one, which uh, talk is he involved in, his panel? He is our social commentary outlets displacing the influence of mainstream media. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's with Chris Raygun. Yay, my favorite. <laughs> um, so, so his so he he talks about Magic the Gathering on YouTube, and he's gonna do a panel at a conference about how he's gonna replace the Wall Street Journal. I guess, like, <laughs> but, <laughs> now wait a minute here. So because. I happen to make YouTube videos about one particular thing on YouTube. Uh, that must be the only thing I know about. Is that uh, the point you're so sarcastically trying to make here? Uh, that I would have no possible leg to stand on as somebody who uh, could speak about the influence of YouTube and its draw away from mainstream media's attention i'm definitely you know it couldn't be uh, the fact that i have been in online advertising for over a decade youtubing for over a decade run a successful search marketing agency uh work have worked directly with ad buys on youtube and with google directly for for the last 10 years hold a master's degree none of these things decent at public speaking no no uh, the fact that I happen to enjoy a children's card game every once in a while must negate that I know anything else that I could possibly speak about anything else. 
I, I don't know. I don't want to talk shit on YouTube or YouTubers because I do YouTube videos myself and I know a lot of people who, uh, they do decent stuff and they, they make decent money off of it. But, um, hold on your butts because that's exactly what I'm going to do here is what you mean. Runs between sort of on the far end, you'll get sort of like nearly academic work being done. Like mm -hmm. the kind of thing that, Dan Olson does, and then, um, and then on the other end, you get again. What's the implication here? That commentary channels are not run by smart people. Is that is that what you're trying to imply? Uh, aren't you, in fact, a commentary channel, but someone who just happens to commentate on other commentators? Um, I don't know what that makes you if people who choose to make commentary videos are not smart. Um, I'm just curious what, what you might say about that. Commentary channels. And when I think of the general vibe of people like Chris Reagan and people like this guy, um, the equivalent between that and printed media, which is part of mainstream media as an idea, um, I think of them as similar to tabloids. Like I think of this guy as similar to like a tabloid opinion article in like some magazine that shows, oh, this person is gonna have a divorce with this actress or whatever. And it's like, mm -hmm. where, where the front cover is all this, like the stuff you see at- Wait a minute. You've already let us know you don't know who I am. You, you've already told us that you don't know who I am. So what do you mean? A general vibe. You saw my picture for the first time ever and called and said I was stupid and insignificant, right? And you based that assessment on, by your own admission, literally nothing at all. And when you talk about the stuff that ends on the front page, uh, you know, as something that YouTube commentators would never do, no, I'm not a hero or anything. But I was able to expose a dangerous ring of registered sex offenders in a children's card game. Um, I guess that doesn't matter, though, because it was just on a commentary channel. There's a reason why New York Times gets taken seriously when they report on something and YouTubers don't get taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's because they don't have standards of ethics and they don't have like and like there's there's actual systemic things involved in the process of making a news story you can't be this stupid you can't be this intellectually dishonest now i'm not saying youtubers are are the new reporters or that people who choose to cover things on youtube are going to automatically have the same clout as the New York Times. But what I can tell you, the exact topic that we're talking about is this trend away from mainstream media. I know how you like to disingenuously present my position as one of many people on a panel as somehow saying that I myself I'm going to replace the New York Times because that is the comparison that you're making. But I can guarantee you this. There are many people out there, including myself, that will 100% believe a YouTube reporter like Tim Pool over anybody in the mainstream media. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be notified the next time I upload a video, make sure you subscribe and take a moment to turn on notifications. If you want to support the cause of this channel, it survives because of the amazing generosity of those that choose to back me on Maker Support. The link is in the description and hopefully you'll consider backing today.